But I understand in 2005 you were with him and actually took him to a hospital at one point, correct? Yes, that's right. That, that was the, the last week of the trial. And when uh, I got a call from Joe and a message from his mother that uh, I needed to come out and just take a look at him because they was worried about his, his demeanor. When I get there, uh, I go to the trial. From there, we go back to Netherland. And he asked me to come upstairs, and he grabbed me and, and started crying and said, please don't leave me. They, they, they're trying to kill me. And I said, when's the last time you ate? He said, no, they're poisoning me. I said, well, when's the last time you drank water? And, and so one thing led to another. So I have a friend of mine that has this huge machine in, in L.A., uh, Global Cardia Care. It's, I said, if you can bring this machine down, Michael's agreed to get on it. And they, they, they clamp you and they squeeze you and it'll print out everything in your body. And the only thing that it printed out was he was extremely dehydrated. Nothing wrong with his heart, nothing wrong with his lungs. And so the next day after we left court, I said, I need to take you to a hospital. He said, no, no, they'll kill me. And I said, well, let's do this. Let's let nobody know where we're going. Let me drive you up to San Francisco to a hospital that don't even know we're coming. He agreed to that. And then I said, look, 20 miles away from here, let's go to one of these hospitals. And we went to a hospital, and they examined him. And at 5.30, or a little bit before 6, they started intravenously putting liquid in him. At 6 o'clock the next morning, they were still putting water in him. And the doctor said to me, had he waited 12 more hours, he would have been dead.